week. Hey guys, it's Blade again from Cardio Security. Today we're looking at the new Alpine unit, the ILX F115D. Okay guys, so I don't know if you can see me behind this massive box, but this here is the ILX F115D, the brand new unit from Alpine. 11 inch floating screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This one has wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, as well as DAB radio, Bluetooth streaming, HDMI in and out, uh, and loads of other features on the unit, which we'll go through in a second. But first of all, let me show you what comes in the box. Okay guys, so I have everything laid out here. As you can see, it's quite a lot of equipment. Uh, it's quite a lot to go through. So I'll just quickly run through everything that comes in the box so you know exactly what you're getting. Now, starting with um, all the wiring accessories that you see at the top of the box. Uh, first of all, we have this green connection lead here. So there's a direct connection on the back of the unit. And this will give you your pre-out. So that's a front, rear, and sub output connection for running amplifiers and stuff like that. So that's that one. And next up, we have um, Alpine-specific camera and uh, data connections. Um, so if you're running an Alpine, uh, excuse me, Alpine-specific uh, dash cam or reverse camera or something like that. These are Alpine specific connections and you also have a speed sensor wire. This one here is for your microphone, steering wheel controls and remote connections. Now this is your Bluetooth microphone. So you connect the back of the unit, run up to your sun visor or headlining so that people can hear you on a call. Uh, this is your GPS connection. And this is a little flat panel to, uh, if you have a doubled in fascia, and you want to make it a singled in fascia, basically you just you can stick this on to make it look a bit neater. And then lastly for the connections is your main power harness. Now, as I've mentioned previously in other Alpine stereos, you have this harness will come de-pinned. So what I mean by that, let me just show you. I've already pinned it up already, but let me show you what I mean. So your red and yellow wires will be de-pinned, so they will come to you like this. So this is, uh, yellow is permanent live, red is ignition. So all you need to do is just make sure you connect that, otherwise your unit's not gonna turn on. So pin them together. So then you have ISO connection, it's universal, so then you can connect a, an adapter for your vehicle, or if it's an older vehicle, it will go straight in. And then this is the main connection for the stereo. That's so that. We have instruction manual, standard issue instruction manual for this unit. So if you have any questions or any queries, everything should be answered in this book here. Next up, we have a little bag of screws and this bracket here. But this is basically to latch in wires for the back of the unit. This is your screws for screwing to the side of the stereo if you're using a, a screw and cage system. And also these screws will attach the face to the body. I'll explain that in a second as well. Uh, again, another little pack of screws. You may need to use them for the side of the stereo. Now we have this bag of three plastic trims here. One's already out. There's basically three plastic trims that you get. Uh, one is very, very important. Um, it's the smallest one that's in here. It's this one here. Now this here, <laughs> without this connected, uh, again, I'll show you in a second, but without this connected, the unit will not power on. So this is like a safety feature. Uh, and then these two bigger black trims will just basically finish off the back of the unit. And lastly, we have the body of the stereo. Okay, so as I said, last but not least, the screen and the body. Now, if you're familiar with these floating screens, you'll know that obviously that they come as two separate parts. You do need to put it together. It's not rocket science, but I can go through how, how it works. Um, but first of all, look at the size of this screen, 11 inches across. It's the biggest screen out on the market today uh, from ourselves. So yeah, amazing by Alpine that they've done this. Uh, it is an HD screen as well, uh, but let's put it all together. I can show you a bit more about the unit itself. Okay, so we've got the unit together. Um, let me quickly turn it around and show you the connections here. So, Right guys, so 
here we have the unit. Um, this is obviously the back of the unit here. Right, so starting off with the connections on the back. Here we have a dual USB connection here. So one is specifically for CarPlay and Android Auto, obviously. And then this one is this white one here. This is specifically for USB connection for playing music or MP4 files. Now, on the rest of the back of the unit, starting down here, this is your main power connection. So on that lead that I showed you already, that goes there. Now, inside here, and if you can see it, it's just there, you have an HDMI in and out on this unit, meaning that you could run a Google Fire Stick HDMI input, so you can run a video to this unit in particular, but you can also run an HDMI out, so if you've got a rear screen in the vehicle, you can view that picture that this is seeing to another screen, so that's quite handy. Um, now, obviously, you've got the fan on the back here to keep the unit cool. Now, over this side, we have those direct connections for the pre-outs, uh, Canvas database connections and camera connections, that kind of thing. Uh, that's the uh, connection for your GPS. This is your connection for your DAB antenna. This lead here is for your FM antenna. It's a regular DIN connection for your FM. And then this one here is for your steering controls. So that's just the steering wheel control input. So that's it. Okay, so now that we have it all screwed together, I thought I'd show you where the screws actually sit. So if you just see inside there, there's two screws, one there, one there, and it's the same on this side. Just the four screws, they are the flat seated screws in the in the bag, so they'll be the only ones that sit in there nicely. Um, and one other thing I think would be best to show you now is this special little piece here to turn the unit on. So if you find these little holes here, those two there, these little feet, if you can see it, they sit inside those holes. So it'll only go in one way. So you basically just drop it in. So see, that's the wrong way around. So you spin it around. It's dropped in place there. It literally just loosely sits in there, but without that connected, you cannot turn the unit on. So just make sure you drop that in there. Uh, but otherwise you have, obviously you can see the bracketry on the back. You can see obviously how the unit tilts. There's just the brackets there. Um, those plastic panels, which I showed you previously, will cover this all up so it looks all neat. Um, but that's it. Okay guys, so uh, we've been through the main outside features, so let's turn it on now. I've got my power ready to go. So I'm just going to connect it up. This will show you how quickly the unit turns on as well. So three, two, one, we have power. I'm just going to come around and show you now. So startup time is not bad at all for a big screen like this. Um, so I'd say that's probably, there you go. So that's probably about six to seven seconds, which is not bad at all for a big old screen like this. So this is the main home screen that you'll come to. It's very bright. Um, like I said, it's an HD screen. So everything's very bright. There's no pixels that you can see or anything like that. So it's very, very good. Now, just to show you down the bottom here, these will obviously light up as shown. These are your main kind of buttons, as it were, on the unit. They're not they're, they're not buttons, they're touchscreen, but these are these are the connections here. So you do have one physical button here, which is you can press and hold to turn the screen off, or it's a voice command button. So you can just press that in. Now, starting over to the left here. Now, if you have your phone connected for CarPlay, this is how you can quickly go into the maps part of the CarPlay. So even if you're in this screen here, you can quickly click that and it will go into the maps on the CarPlay, which I find is quite handy to have. Here we have the volume up and down, standard, uh, mute. This is your audio button. So you can go into obviously your radio, you can click through the different radio functions, and the different audio function, functions, stuff like that. This is your home button, that'll take you back home. You have a camera button just here, and then you have a skip tracks. That's it for the buttons on the unit. Otherwise, it's all touch screen. So you have there your main connection. So you have normal radio, uh, which is including DAB. So you can find what you need to find on there. Go home. You have USB if you have a USB connected. Uh, HDMI, again, HDMI input on this one. Uh, auxiliary, if you have an auxiliary audio uh, or video input on there, that will come through there. Bluetooth audio, and then your music once that's been connected. Then down the bottom here is where you'd have your phone connections. So when you pair your phone up, you can go into your phone book from there. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will show up if you're connected via those. And then you have setup. 
So anyone that knows Alpine units, they're very good in terms of their settings. So you can go through all sorts of different settings, sound settings, and an abundance of different things you can do with the unit to make it sound exactly how you want. Yeah, so if you tap on this unit, what is quite nice about this one, it has a voltage meter. So you can actually check the voltage of your, of your battery through the head unit, which is quite cool, I think. Uh, these are the main sound settings that you would come to. So you have EQ, so you can change it, all your EQ, crossover settings, time alignment, fader balance. So like I said, it's loads and loads of settings. You have um, quick kind of bass treble adjustments if you don't want to go in too much in depth, uh, but that's that. And then up here is, again, your phone. That's my phone connected there. That's it, so now I'm gonna show you Apple CarPlay connected via wire and wireless, because the CarPlay on this is wired and wireless. And then the Android Auto, unfortunately, is not wireless on this unit, so I can connect it via wire and show you how that works. Okay guys, so got an iPhone here. Just gonna quickly show you how to connect to wireless Apple CarPlay for this unit. So uh, all you need to do is just drop into your settings, go to Bluetooth, find the device that's currently down as Alpine DA. So we just connect to the unit there. Let's wait for it to pair up. So we are now connected. So then now, usually when you first time connect to it, it's gonna ask you whether you want CarPlay to work. You just click yes, and then you just wait for the unit to respond. See it's doing its thing now. And you can click on CarPlay, and there you are. Okay, so as you can see, it looks brilliant on this big screen. Obviously, HD screen is gonna come out and show you everything that you need. Um, obviously, Maps looks great as well. It's quite fast, responsive, has everything you need. Um, so. I'll quickly show you how the Android Auto works. Alright guys, so I'm just going to show you the Android Auto very quickly. Like I said, unfortunately this does not come with wireless Android Auto on this unit yet, so I'm just going to connect it to the USB, plug her in, charges the phone, straight into Android Auto. So again, very, very touch responsive, same as before. The maps is obviously nice big on the screen, but yeah, there's your Android Auto. So guys, the Alpine ILX F115D, what do we think? Massive 11 inch screen, uh, so big doesn't even barely fit on our table. But yeah, the biggest screen we have on the market at the moment just come into us, so yeah, brilliant unit. Those who know the Alpine units will know they're always very well specced, so I'll quickly run through the highlights of the unit. I've already said that it's an 11 inch HD screen, which is very, very big, biggest on the market at the moment, but the internal spec, in terms of that, uh, you have a Class D, which is one of the first units to come with a Class D amplifier built in, which will give you four by 50 watts of high res output. The free outs on the back of the unit are four volts, so that's, that's very good. You have a front and rear camera input. Uh, you can run a dedicated dash cam, so an Alpine dash cam directly into the unit. So this unit has an HDMI input and output, which is very, very handy. So you can have an HDMI source coming in, like a Fire Stick or Xbox, PlayStation, that kind of thing, playing on this unit. Uh, but if you have, say, a flip down screen in a van, for instance, uh, you can play that same HDMI source onto that secondary screen. So you haven't, it's just going in and out directly out of this unit. So that's very, very handy to have. Okay, so uh, personally, I think that this unit would be perfectly suited for the, the van, truck, and SUV market, just purely for the fact of the size of the screen. So stuff like T5s, T6s, transit vans, that kind of thing where the unit will sit quite high on the dash. Um, it's not gonna be in the way. So it's not to say you can't put it into a car, but I can just see this massive screen being in the way in a, in a smaller cabin. So just bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a single in body. So just make sure you've got a single in slot or even a doubled in, just have a pocket underneath. Um, now, my personal opinion on the unit is, to, to be honest, it's, it's brilliant. It's a massive screen, the biggest on the market at the moment from ourselves. Um, HD screen, brilliant spec from Alpine as usual. Um, price point is very good as well. I mean, there's other units out there with um, a similar style that are similarly priced. I mean, there's, there's no losing on this unit. I was actually expecting it to be a lot more. 
Um, but it's available on our website at corridorsecurity.com and our sister company tuning store and the current price is a thousand pounds so I don't think that's too bad. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.